Uh, we probably were more familiar with the first one, uh, but praise the Lord that uh, He will carry us through, money. And He is wonderful, isn't He? All right. We praise the Lord for that. We're going to continue today uh, and for a while on the central theme of Revelation 1 and 8, I am Alpha and Omega. So by now everybody knows what I'm going to speak about in a sense and uh, at least incorporate our scriptures under the understanding of what it means to be related to the one who is for all people Alpha and Omega. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this day and for your word. We pray right now for your anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your man's servant, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, for you are my God and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. So what does any other scripture have to do with this? And the answer is everything. Because if God is our Alpha and our Omega, that means that He is our everything. Understanding that, uh, yes, we're using the Greek words Alpha, which means beginning, Omega, which means ending, but God does not behave in time. God is not constrained by time. God, time actually is irrelevant to God. But we are forced to live in time. Today we set a time for our gathering as 11 a.m. So, some of you were here on time. Some of you were here after time. But time is how we judge you in one way or another today. And that's how we judge each other every day, everywhere we go. Everything is about time. You know, when the police pulls you over, that's the time. And uh, he might ask you why you, if you were speeding, and you might say, well, I was late for church. That's because of time. Or you might not know what to say, but it, nevertheless, you're going to get a ticket because on that time, or at that time, you were not being obedient to the law. Everything is, is, is about time. But God was before there was anything named time. So God doesn't really have anything to do, or let's say time doesn't have anything to do with God. God has something to do with everything, but time cannot restrict God. God was only restricted by time for a few years when he came down in his son and lived among us and spent roughly 33 and a half years uh, journeying with us and was forced to be restricted by time. Uh, and sometimes he will say this, my time is not yet come. Then someone will come and say, I want you to heal this person, and he will say, my time has not yet come. But the Alpha and Omega principle is that God spans all of time. So he is not just your beginning and your end, but he is all of you, even before your beginning. The psalmist says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, God created you, he called you, he named you. I mean, God is just so awesome that he knew me before my parents met each other. How is that possible? Don't ask me to explain it because I never try to explain God any more than I could say a few things from my limited understanding. But remember, it is not what you can explain that matters with God, it is what you believe that matters with God. I believe that God is, and I believe that without faith it is impossible to please Him. I believe that God is the creator of heaven and earth. I don't care what Michael deGrasse Tyson says about the earth, how long, how old it is, Michael deGrasse Tyson isn't God. In case you don't know who that is. That's the world's most renowned physicist, astrophysicist. 
And he can tell you that the Bible is limited and that the, the Bible can't be true because the Bible is only showing a few thousands of years. And he, with his craziness, wants to tell you how old the earth is. But well, where was he when this earth was created? Is that what God said in Isaiah? He says, well, whose counsel did I see when I created the earth? I mean, who did I ask where to put Mars as opposed to Jupiter, as opposed to Earth? Whose wisdom did I seek to make it so that Earth is the only life-giving source for humans? Try going to Mars and see if you can breathe in Mars, Mars air and survive. Uh, try going to any other planet and see if you can find your brother or your sister. Uh, try, try to see how this earth rotates, and in our time, because that's not God's time, it takes one day for it to complete, completely rotate. And then as it's rotating every day, it's going around the sun, so we think, and it takes approximately 300 and 65 and a quarter days. So in 2020, we fulfilled that quarter, having gone four years of doing this. So this year, what do we have? A leap year. A leap year. So, so, so now we have 366 days this year. That's because every year we lie to ourselves and say it's 365 days. For our convenience, we can't do quarter days, so we say it's 365. But the scientists, even the scientists will tell you it's 365 and a quarter. So now every four years, we have a leap year. Who designed that? Where was Michael deGrasse Tyson when God decided that it would take 365 and a quarter days for the Earth to rotate completely around the sun? Yeah, you know, it, it, it just amazes me that men with our limited abilities think that we can outsmart, outthink, and outunderstand God. That's why we reject the principles of the word. That's why we reject what God has given us. Imagine that when I just I just bought some some equipment in my house, in my kitchen, and uh, and uh, uh, they come with a manual. I had to put up my, my microwave, I love it by the, by the way, love using it, you know, first time I got it, the way I had it. Hallelujah. Now, what sense would it make for me to stand up there and look at the microwave and tell it to get up there and put itself up so that I can enjoy it? Or what sense would it take for me to say, hey Mike, give me a hand, let's take this on the wall. No, I went to the manual that they sent to me, and that manual gave me specific instructions as to how to install my microwave oven. And I can tell you, it is properly installed. Why? Not because I'm so great an, an installer of microwave ovens, it's because I read the manual. Well, this is not the typical one, because this is just an iPad. But in, in the old-fashioned church days, this would be a Bible. That's the manual that God has given us for our living. Yes. We have a manual that tells us how we should live, what we should avoid. You know, at the same thing in the manual, they have a, a, a triangle, and it's got a red thing in it, and it's a cross to it, and, and it means Warning. In other words, don't do this. If you do this, your equipment might fail. But God has warnings in his word. God has also, here's the to-do thing. And God gives you all the equipment. You know, I love the manuals. It tells me all the tools I need. It gives me an itemized list of the parts. And then it tells me, connect this and connect that. Praise the Lord. If you can read and you can understand, you can become a great assembler of whatever. <laughs> well, if you can read and you can understand the word, you become a great person of God. Yeah. 
and you become a great ambassador for the word, and you will understand in as much you, as you can what God means for you, what it means to have Alpha and Omega governing you, covering you, providing for you, seeing to it that you are blessed. I don't know about you, but I'm a blessed person. Yes. I am, as Skip used to say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Uh, and I enjoy when he would ever say, how are you doing about the skit? I'm blessed, too blessed to be stressed. It's a heart. That's good for you, and I'm working on that too. I don't want to be stressed. You don't need to be stressed because God says, go to sleep at night. Unless the Lord keeps this house, their labor who try to stay up all night and keep this house, they labor in vain. Unless God is the one who's controlling your life, all you're doing is spinning wheels but you're not getting anywhere. God has given you a manual. He says, in the midst of trouble, when your enemies and your foes rise up against you, what should you do? You should sit down and have a meal with the Lord. I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Today's scripture says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the one who shines direction for me. And he is the one who cares for me, who has saved me, and who continues to keep me safe. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And therefore, I don't worry. I don't fret. Though a host should encamp around me, I will be comforted in the knowledge that the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who sees the end at the very beginning of time, and the one who sees that the end is not really the end, but the beginning. I know that's confusing. You say, what kind of nonsense are you saying, Pastor? The end is not the end, but the beginning. Well, God says that at your end will be the beginning of your eternity. You see, we, God says if you live for me and you, uh, you follow my precepts, you will not die. Not that your body will live forever, but you will not die. The essence of who you are will live on. And the Bible says that there's coming a day. There's coming a time. Where we all have to give an account. Yes. And then after that, there is a judgment. Yes. And after that, there is an eternity. And there's an eternity for the blessed ones who will follow the Lord. And he will say, inherit my kingdom that I've prepared for you. He, and then for those that aren't so blessed, he will say, depart from me. Yes. I always say, usually at funerals, he will say, when you get to the... To, to the pearly gates that people think that Peter really is going to be holding the admissions to heaven. I said, Peter only has one question for you, smoking or non-smoking? <laughs> Some of you will enter the smoking section, and others, like me, will enter the non-smoking section. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be in the non-smoking section.